Go ahead. Um, well, I didn't share anything. <laughs> Basically, um, been living in Portland a couple of years, have a home up in Seattle, and we keep going back and forth to which city we're going to live in. But if I do live in Portland, um, we looked in the housing market for a while and just really before everything started to go down and we just stopped. So I, we've been renting in the Pearl, which is ridiculous because our mortgage payment would be less. And I know that I would never buy a house unless I had flexibility to it because we're at a point in life that we'll probably live in two locations and um, we like small spaces. And our biggest challenge was we looked at the condo situation and that's just not us and um, we'd love a home. But we looked at all the close-in homes and they're either huge or um, there were just other factors that it didn't um, weigh in until I discovered really through Airbnb, you know, the situation. And I thought, like, gosh, you know, that's really kind of what we want to do. And, you know, that kind of space and just has a lot of opportunities. And our, my big question now, I guess, is the type of home. You know, if we're going to start house hunting again. And we like the southeast. And this seems to be where, uh, you know, I see this. Um, a lot of ADUs in this area, and um, kind of curious as to, I tried it a quasi in our Seattle house, and it was functional, but um, we split the house, and when you're in a house and it wasn't built for that, you do have a lot of acoustics issues, so I'm will be curious here to hear why you chose a completely separate unit, because I, I know a lot of people, you know, convert the basement downstairs, but walking above and everything can be a real big issue and transferring noise from one level to the other. So um, just, you know, general um, education of what, how, how to do it um, and to see if it sounds like a possible plan for us and help us move forward with the idea. Awesome. So, one request, could you pull your name tag down a little bit so I can see oh. it? Thanks. I'm not good with names, so. Laura. Laura. Um, we have a house not too far from here. It's on Grand Street between 7th and MLK. And it's a Victorian house on a huge lot. And we've been there seven or eight years. And um, I've always been interested in green building. And I grew up in New Mexico in um, adobes. And I'm interested in the whole straw bale thing. And ideally, I'd say, oh, I'd love to build a straw bale, but that's such a huge thing. I thought this would be you know, a smaller project that would you know, start a learning curve. Um, <clears throat> we, this is our current, basically we're interested in building um, in a current footprint. We have this little, kind of a, we call it our garage potting shed. Um, and it's 250 really pretty. square feet in yeah. the front. And we have a huge mm -hmm. lot, so we've always had a lot of space to work with. That's mm -hmm. the back of it there. And we have a basement that we could easily put everything that's in the, get the garage in the basement. Um, one issue we're working with, and what I hope to find out today, is this is kind of an aerial view here. You can kind of see the space it takes up on the uh -huh. lot. Um, is that the existing structure is kind of wedged in between our house and the property line. Okay. So um, we would have to build, give it kind of a second story loft area and then possibly build um, into the backyard and that would actually be the front of it. So the front of it would be facing into our backyard versus the street side. Um, so I guess one thing I've kind of earmarked to learn about is um, whether we're required legally to build on the exact footprint. Um, reading the stipulations, um, it's supposed to be set 60 feet back from the street or the sidewalk. It's only 42, and then I think it's really close to the property line. It's supposed to be five feet away. So I'm curious to hear about um, legally what we're able to do with the space we're working with. Right. And our motivation, I think, is flexibility. A part of it's financial, um, and we wouldn't be. We've been talking about this for years, and I don't think we'd be able to pull it off. We have a parent that's willing to. So um, we hope to maybe rent it to make back the money or uh, after that happens, you know, have in-laws stay there instead of in our house. Um, my husband <coughs> might have his office there. So it's just the flexibility. Um, it's, it's interesting to hear people say they spend part of the year away in other countries. Um, my husband works in Belize part of the year and we often talk about traveling or spending part of the year somewhere else. 
but to have that as a base to potentially come back to. Uh -huh. um, so, um, you know, design-wise, you know, we're curious about using green materials. Um, and again, we have to have a loft space and then, you know, just figure out how to work within the parameters that, we are, that we're given. Awesome. All right. Susan Merritt, I don't know if you guys want to co-present or each present or. You can fill in. Okay. Um, so I have, we live in last edition, and there's a garage which is primarily used for, well, it's only used for storage. So it's got lots of sports equipment and gardening stuff. And, and, um, and so my thought is to, to do a B&B. Um, that has the potential when it's not rented, my kids are going to be having kids in the next 10 years and have them have a space to come visit or guests or friends. Um, income, definitely income. I'd like to quit my job and this could sort of send me over the edge where I could do that because I don't make very much money. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in a historic district, so my question is, so I'm, I would like something ideally about 600 square feet. Um, my questions are, is there any sort of a um, break when you build, if you use part of the structure that's already there, so if you use some walls from the garage that's already there or part of the foundation. Um, I want a loft. I would love it to be really contemporary. I don't know if I can do that in that neighborhood. I understand there's some limitations about design because the historic district. Um, I definitely want it as green as possible that I can afford. Um, yeah. well, the possibility of, I mean, rental or even staying there and renting out the funds you talked about also. Yeah, yeah, being there part time and living out of the country in the winter and coming back and staying there and renting out the current house. Great. Is that, that covered? Um, okay. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, yeah, I have a question like her. Um, if I could take the six feet close to my property line, I, I could make a bigger space. Somebody mentioned that if you built a concrete wall there because of fire, um, that that might give you the opportunity to take up more of your more of your property and go next to the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I have a house just down Skidmore on Vancouver, actually. And there's a when I bought it, uh, there was a nice 20 by 20 garage in the back, uh, not attached to the house. And someone had already put in plumbing and electricity. And it was kind of like the crazy uncle's apartment at the time. Um, and I didn't use it for a while. In 2005, I had a city inspector come down and kind of walk me through what I need to do to bring it up to code and all the blah, blah, blah that they want me to do. And it just seemed like it was getting a little outrageous in price. And I, I balked at it. And I put it off until I really knew if I really wanted to spend the money. Now, um, I do. And the neighborhood's changing. My wife and I just bought a house in, in Mexico this year, and ideally we want to be living there full time, but have a place to come back to uh, to work or to work on my rentals. Yeah. And I want to do uh, just finish this garage for under thirty thousand dollars. That's my main goal. Nothing fancy, very cheap, um, and with a profit tub. <laughs> Probably a hundred bucks if you go to the right place. And I've already got it. And I'm, I'm, a, car, I'm a carpenter and I'm going to do most of the work myself. Yeah, great. All right, let's go to, let's go to Joe. Okay. Uh, my name is Joe. I bought a house um, this past December. I'm in southeast on 44th uh, between Division and Hawthorne. And I'd always... Um, envisioned buying property, um, not as just a straight ahead, like I'm going to buy a house, just live in the house, end of story. I always wanted something like a duplex or um, 
property that already had a rental unit. And interestingly, I kind of, I was looking at properties along those lines, but I took price out of it, and then when I found this uh, property, um, didn't really factor that into the decision. And I just feel really fortunate because um, learning now what you need to have in terms of property to get an ADU up, um, I actually have a large lot and the house is in the very front right corner, which leaves me plenty of room to build. So I feel, feel really um, excited about that. Um, what I'd like to do is a fairly simple design. Um, I'd like to go close to the full 800 square feet and um, basically do a 500 square foot rectangle floor plan with a 300 foot loft similar to what you have here. Um, not too fancy, not super modern, at least from the outside. I think it's going to mimic the house, which is very basic. Um, how a child would draw a house, a rectangle with a triangle roof. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my biggest um, hurdle is going to be funding on the heels of just buying a place. Um, but I'm really, uh, I really want to make that work because I see this as financially as a, a really great way to leverage good uh, neighborhood and, and good location. And ideally, this would start out as. Um, you know, financial decision to create income, whether I live in the house or in the ADU. And eventually this may turn into something that uh, a family member may live in, but uh, really flexible on the, on the use. Awesome. Uh, go to Jen. Uh, we own a house in Bend, so some of my questions are going to be for the city of Bend. Um, and it's a rental, and we bought it about maybe six months ago. Um, and we talked to a contractor there, and we know that we can only build about 480 square feet. We're going to tear down the existing garage and then build in its place. Um, and there it can only be a percentage of what the main structure is mm -hmm. for square feet, which I didn't know. Uh, so some of the questions we have are about design and how total square footage is calculated. If we can do, you know, if how a loft and the ceiling height is configured, because um, we would really like to do a separate bedroom, um, and we want to do a vacation rental, um, and we're thinking someone with kids or a kid, it'd be nice to have a separate space or something for the kid, and we have kids, so. Um, so we would like to use it sometimes. We have family there. Um, and then also, just in general, I guess, I'm a realtor, so I work with a lot, a lot of clients who have questions about ADUs. It seems like a big, hot topic right now. Um, and I have a lot of passion for um, a lot of the different aspects about ADUs as well, with the design, and I find it really exciting. And um, for buyers, it seems like people are, more and more people are looking for a property that has the potential to have an ADU or sellers who maybe can't sell but are looking to have some flexibility with what they do with their property. Um, and I think that's about it. I have other questions I can think of. Okay. Great. I'm going to... So, yeah. Uh, uh, Jess or Taya, either one. Cynthia, um, we actually bought a property in Macaulay about a year ago. Um, and it's, you have a, a long driveway along the side to a garage. Uh, attached to the carport. So it's like the attachment house in the back. Um, background, we naively started this project not knowing what we did. We have four friends who built uh, ADUs in their backyard just ad hoc without permits. And we came to the city of Portland not knowing the rules and regulations and we're like, they were like, oh yeah, he's our guy. He'll totally do it. And we're like, okay, let's do this. Um, <laughs> without really putting much thought into it. And then we had our neighbors call the city of Portland and we had inspectors recently come out uh, about a month ago. So everything has been stopped, but it actually was a good thing because we got to take a step back and figure everything out. So we're slowly catching up right now. Awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> That's a new story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's, we had, um, we got, the inspectors came out, we had just demolished a 200 square foot garage that was rotten. 
so that was not illegal. Yeah. Which is good. Which is yeah. We hadn't started right. building anything, which was oh, yeah. great timing. So we didn't get in trouble. Perfect. We didn't get in trouble. Yeah, and we have a carport. So they thought our, they just came out because they thought it was bigger because we had a garage and a carport. And so they thought the space was bigger. That we were not. Yeah. So we um, spent, we had a week off work and we spent a week at the city current office learning having some painful days, having them laugh at us <laughs> to to get a designer. <laughs> so we've had kind of a rough learning curve. <laughs> but we now um, have a designer and we have a framing contractor and um, the space is cleared and um, we're just kind of finessing our designs. Um, and we also want to do it um, for, you know, like 30000 or under. Um, that's our limitations. Um, and the, it's going to be a 400 square, uh, 400 square foot footprint with like 105 square foot loft. Um, and um, we want a uh, pellet burning stove or a wood burning stove in it. Back in the kitchen, basic. And the purpose is for renting, for passive income, and then possibly for my parents. Um, they are elderly to have an option for that. Cause, and we don't have any family near, they're far away. Um, and we, yeah, just kind of, you know, as we, I feel like we learned a lot in that one painful week of going back and forth to the city's office, but a lot to learn and just kind of what the information to take into our design development and also managing contractors. Great. Did you feel like the city was pretty, uh, the inspectors, were they nice about it or how, how was that? They were nice, they weren't helpful. They weren't helpful. Not, the city yeah. gave us a slap to say because we went on the website and we're like learning a lot. And they were like, if you can draw a straight line, you can submit plans. That is literally what they said. No, yeah, right. That's what the website says. And it's like, if you can draw a straight line and you have an engineering degree or an architect degree, you can submit that. Yeah, that's the reality. That's the reality. Yeah. So we learned that the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> what, if, what if you can't draw straight lines and you have an engineering degree? I know, exactly. <laughs> right, right. They, weren't, they weren't rude. They were perfectly friendly. But it yeah. was, there's no, nothing that the city, um, for people who are, you know, lower or middle income, who um, are trying to do the process themselves. There's nothing except for really, when we found like this class that will help introduce you and orient you. So I wish the city would have just some more clear communication and offer more resources to people. Yeah. Otherwise, that's why there's so many unpermitted houses to people out in the Cully or other areas where they're low, a little lower income and the city don't have the resources to navigate the city. I think it's only 30% of all ADUs are permitted. Yeah, in the city, that's the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably less. Yeah, exactly. That's 30% there. It might be no. There's no time. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pause one more time.